Okay, today I want to show you how you can easily upgrade your Blender workflow. So I have this uh, animation I saw on Pinterest. Uh, so you have a ball sequence and then uh, and you cut to another scene and then another scene and another th scene. Usually when you're doing something like this in Blender, uh, you need to create several projects. I don't like working in multiple projects because then you have to deal with uh, different assets from one file to another. I prefer just working inside one Blender project and it's quite easy to do. So let me show you what I did. So this is uh, uh, the version I created. I didn't create the full length of uh, the the scene, uh, but it was just a simple proof of concept. Uh, so you can see we have the ball and yeah, we start with this ball and the particle system. We cut to another scene uh, with a snake. We're not just switching cameras, but we are switching different scenes and uh, you can see they're all here. Uh, you start with the ball, you cut to another scene. So it's like you're working with Premiere Pro. And I think this is one of the most underrated part of Blender, the, the Blender sequence editor. You can have multiple scenes in one project and uh, each scene is treated as a, as its own project, like its own project file. And uh, this really makes working on projects like this quite quick. Uh, so I, I can easily preface this. So maybe I want, so I have this ball sequence and maybe I want to cut to the snake around here and cut again to the ball, but at a different uh, time. Uh, so I can just duplicate this sequence and uh, just maybe elongate it a bit. Okay, so it's showing this because I think the length of my sequence is a bit short. So I can go back to the editor, to my ball sequence and uh, make, make the timeline a bit longer. So let's say 256 and go back to my sequence editor. Now let me just also split this so that I can have uh, my timeline. I don't want to switch too much. To get the updated version, I can just simply re-add it using shift A scene and then ball scene. And I can see now it's the length of my timeline with all the animations uh, that I want. So I can come here and uh, let's say I want these two, the frames I want to bring back, uh, uh, let's say frame 84 and up to there. And uh, then I can switch back to the snake, but uh, this time around here. So I can just stream these. So let's see. We play the snake with the ball, go to the snake sequence, come back to the ball, go to the snake, ball, or another scene you have, and then finally just like that. So it really changes uh, the way you work in Blender and uh, makes uh, working on these projects really really simple so for example if i wanted to add another snake here doing the same action i just have i don't have to open up another blender project i just have to go to snake edit to my snake sequence and uh, let me just go to my layout here and uh, look at this and the way i set this up is that i can just move this and uh, they have another snake so i'm just going to duplicate use uh select everything your editing and you see we have that updated and rendering this I think is way faster than having say we have three sequences so having three different projects and rendering one after the after the other here where if it's time to render you just go to the main to the editing sequence and just go to render and it will render your sequence as it is here but one thing to note is that uh, it will use the settings for, for each scene you have. So if you're using cycles here and in your edit, you're using Eevee, it will just ignore it, this uh, for, for the sequence that you are on right now for the sequence is rendering. So for example, this ball sequence is using cycles. So it will use cycles there. So if the snake sequence is using Eevee, it will use Eevee. If it goes back to this and it finds that this one is using cycles, it will switch back to that engine. And another thing it, you have to note is uh, if say the snake sequence is using cycles and on CPU, it will also in the edit one rendering, it will use the CPU. So it might, so make sure that you're using the right settings. So you set up all the settings you want this sequence to render and all the other sequences. And uh, then in the final edit, you just set the resolution and frame rate you want to render and the output. Let's talk about maybe this project a bit. 
if you want to check out this project file again links are going to be in the description but uh, let me just show you quickly how i made the particles and maybe how to quickly animate a snake uh, to, to animate a snake like this or oh, another thing you have to note is uh, each sequence you want to render needs to have a camera has to have a camera so let me show you how you can create the different sequences so i'll just open up a new project file a new project here let's say i have i have this cube that is animated that is animated like this and i have another scene so to create a new scene you just click on this button new scene and this time i have the suzanne head just zooming away so just did it and that is my scene and i have another scene uh, with uh, let's say a torus rotating to put them together all you have to do is create the final th scene or your main scene go to the sequence editor or video editor and just importing those different scenes so you can see the list of the scenes we have you can name them properly uh, i can call this i don't know ball or whatever you have it for your first sequence but uh yeah then you can import them here and i uh, have that you can trim this by just selecting this then you can add another sequence yeah one thing one thing to note is that uh, if a sequence or a scene doesn't have a camera it will show up empty so let's go back to scene one and go to layout and just add a camera shift a because by default any new scenes do not have cameras so make sure you have a camera in your scene uh, this is what this is what your sequence will see and now you can see that uh, yeah sometimes uh you have this error i don't know if it's a if it's a bug but the sequence doesn't update correctly just remove it and re-add it and uh, you should be good again you can add the, the last scene which i think doesn't have a camera either so we can so we can go to that i'm going to switch this area here to 3d so that i see that and uh, just add a camera there and switch back to my editing sequence and let me call this edit now you have that and you can see now you have the different sequences yeah prayer files are going to be in the description on my gamma page and my patreon page thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video